Well, thank you everybody for joining us. So I'm Colin Hobson, I'm CEO of Open Spatial, and you'll hear more from me, Johan Nell is the CTO from Open Spatial. And then online, we actually have Zane, he couldn't be here in person, so we've recorded his insets, uh, but he is in fact online as well. Zane, you wanna turn your camera on, they can see you, you can give him a wave. Here we go, everybody, hi there. So we'll be going backwards and forwards. And if you do have questions for him, I think you'll see, he'll kind of keep us in the background and we can, we can answer. Thanks Zane. But if you take your phone while we're going around doing the introductions, take a picture, get in the webinar because we're going to run about six or seven polls and then we can get your input and your feedback. You will need to register, but just put in any name you like. And as we hit the polls, you'll be able to fill it in and we'll see the, the results live. And then of course, Zane can see and he can be interactive. So if you'd like to, that would be great if you could do that. Um, we will run this as a workshop. Just a little bit about open spatial and I'll keep it super short. And I really, you'll see the context of what we're talking about is not to show you, but in the context, I will show you some of our software. I really am trying to focus on the digital transformation piece of the puzzle. And some of the context is obviously the work we've been engaged in for many years. So as a company, we've been in business 20 years. We have offices in three continents and a bunch of customers in those. And if you could pick out some of those, I know there's a couple in the room that are right on the, on the board there. And, you know, so we've been doing GIS stuff and, and this digital transformation, in fact, is, you're welcome. <laughs> this digital transformation is in essence what we've been doing, I think. Depends on what you define digital transformation as. Great. Yes, so I work for, as Brett said, I work for the city of Greater Bendigo, which is located in central Victoria in southeastern Australia. And we are a regional council of about 3,000 square kilometres. We're kind of the third largest regional city council. And we're on the Jaja Warung land and Tungurung country for First Nations. And our population's around about kind of 120,000, something like that, and growing. We certainly are growing as a city, a um, mixture of city and regional properties. And in terms of development, we process around about 100 subdivisions per year and about 50 capital works projects, large capital works projects that require as constructed data to be delivered. Obviously, the city delivers a number more capital works projects. And so I work within the GIS and assets department, which is kind of under the umbrella of engineering. And we are responsible for maintaining the asset management system, all spatial data, the corporate GIS. We're responsible for asset revaluations, mobile computing, spatial solution, all spatial analysis for the organization and maps. So a lot of responsibilities focusing today, obviously, on the asset perspective and as constructed data. Now, just to set the context, the context here on digital transformation is around utility data. And Zane is obviously involved in that. He's They've deployed our software and been using it. And he's also focusing on well, what are the digital transformation aspects of that. And so this is essentially the life cycle of that data and in large part. And so our agenda is, is something like this. What is digital transformation? What are we referring to? What do we mean? We have a product called ACDC. That's the context of which you're just as constructed design certification. And if essentially we'll walk through some of the things it does, it's certainly not full blown. This is everything the product does. You'll see quite a bit of it, but that's, that's the context because it, we realize, in fact, that we've been doing this for a long time. So we'll consider some examples. Bendigo is one with Zane. We'll also refer to South Australia water. And those you'll have some in the case studies that I'll link to that you'll get off in the email for joining the webinar. You'll have those in there as well. So we'll look at before and after. We dive fairly deeply into uh, workflows and the transformations within those. And then looking at the benefits and uh, just touching on digital twins and some of the whole new 3D thing and what's the digital transformation involved in some of that. And of course, common issues and best practices. Now, it is a workshop. So if you have a question, you can actually ask it straight away. We will break out into discussion groups, a few of those, like about four during this time. And we'll take some polls, trying to make it a little more interactive. I know I've worked years and years to keep my voice boring and flat and monotone. <laughs> and so, you know, we'll go from there and, and Johan will jump in every now and then so that you don't have to look at me all this time. So with that, I'll get started. 
And it's sort of an interesting thing. I don't know what each of you think digital transformation means. I took a look. Here's one to get you thinking a little bit. And no, I'm not going to discuss what it does not mean. <laughs> we'll, we'll run through a few and, and clearly I'm going to touch on the view and the experiences we've had and customers involved in that. And so we'll go in there, but if we get a little more academic, if you go to Gartner, you'll get a long one where digital transformation is anything from IT modernization to digital optimization, to invention of new digital business models. It's a widely used term in different organizations and it has different contexts. It could be just from paper to digital. It could be any number of things, changing a complete service workflow. If we look at Wikipedia, actually that one was probably a bit more useful. So it deals with non-digital products, services or operations, kind of very broad. And so what we'll do is we'll focus essentially on the utility side of that and the data that's involved in that and how does that go then for me this is foundational because if you don't have data or if you have bad data you kind of can't do that much okay and so that's really at the heart of, of where we're coming from so in this life cycle we're focusing on the context of this workshop is utilities asset information and looking at how does that flow where does it come from what are the actual sort of transfer points for digital transformation within that life cycle so we'll go to the first poll because we kind of want to get some sort of baseline. The first poll is to what extent has your organization applied digital transformation to as constructed submittals? So this is very focused on as constructed data, utilities data in your organization or, or that you know of. We're just trying to get a feel. How common is this? So some initiatives. And I would, yeah, okay, that, that looks about right. And that is, we're sort of at the beginning stages, early on in the, in the bell curve for this, I would, in general, was my impression. So some initiatives, early stages. So good, thank you. So the breakouts are gonna work as follows. And I kind of put one right in the beginning to see how we go with that. We're only gonna have four breakouts, so it's not, not too heavy duty. But in essence, it's a short discussion. You're just in the group and, talk about what are those experiences. I'll pop the question up in a minute and I'll leave it there and try and focus just on that question. Don't get just sidetracked on too many other things. So there's no right or wrong answer in this instance. So there's two questions for this breakout and that what areas of business has your organization engaged in, in digital transformation? Just to kind of get an idea, what are people doing? And then just touch on major benefits and major issues, just two things. I did note some of those. I probably didn't get it all, but it's just to take some kind of notes for that. So thank you. Yeah, that's interesting. I think it's actually a pretty good cross-section in the room right there. So good. So ACDC, the, our particular product and what's involved in that, it's a product which is essentially a comprehensive solution for automating workflow creation and validation and loading of data from electronic submittals, plans as constructed drawings, and pulling those through a whole set of processes to get it directly into your asset management system. So that's GIS, or CMMS, or ERPs, doesn't really matter. So in essence, that's it. And I'm just using that as the context. So Zane is one of the folks that's been doing that for a few years and using that. And we asked him a quick question. And the question here was, you know, what sort of before and after using the product and what changed in terms of the digital transformation? Be before deploying ACDC, it was a process of manual digitizing assets off plans, PDFs, and then importing those into our asset management system. And post implementation of ACDC, the data remains digital and it is reviewed using ACDC desktop and import it into the asset management system. We'll delve into that a little more. So one of the things we're focusing on here, and it's one part of this workflow, is that spot within the life cycle where it's the handover of data from one group, essentially construction documents and data to the GIS and asset management groups. And so that's a key piece of that puzzle. And if we drill down into that, it kind of looks in at a high level, there's design, which turns into creation of construction drawings. There's plan check, whether that's manual and whether the design handover is currently as PDFs or even wet signature paper. That's a fact of life. And so that's what's happening. And then there's construction. And so even if the design is 3D, often the construction drawings are pushed back to 2D. And then that's done as the as constructed and marked up. And so it really becomes a large part of the data that's transmitted. 
And then, of course, there's a handover and acceptance. So there's a whole lot of transitions going on right here. And eventually, the GIS people or asset management folks, they've got to consume all of this and put it into their systems. And then it becomes essentially foundational for the next, I don't know, 100 years of what the planning, maintenance, operations, et cetera, goes on in on there. So that little handover there is fairly critical. It's interesting in geospatial terms. I mean, if you look at the AEC and buildings, they're way ahead on this. They've got standards, building gets handed over. It comes with the model, which has all the assets, all of the attributes, and it's part of the handover. I don't know what the trouble is on GIS side of the house. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> I think we're certainly getting there, but it's interesting. That's sort of the backdrop of that workflow. And so with ACDC, we looked at all of that from design all the way to digital twin. And if you look at the current scenario, there's design which could involve the, just CAD or survey for the existing stuff. And there's data there. Typically that then gets given or provided in some form. And this is not the ACDC workflow. This is just kind of putting in a linear fashion that diagram previously. At this point, there's a whole set of ETL of translation and pulling in and checking and reworking of data that in fact was already good enough to build something with survey accuracy and had all the attributes for everything they needed to put there. So ETL is then a process. And so if you are looking at digital transformation and you're only focused on the ETL part, well, you're kind of missing the creation part of that unless the surveyors are providing GIS data. So we'll come back to that as a question. That then gets put into the asset management system of record, and it may or may not be 3D, and it'll get into a digital twin. So this, does this workflow, and that's a broad generalization, does that look kind of, kind of like it's there? So what we've done with ACDC is we've said, you know, we need a solution that addresses each of these components, all of those different transitional workflows, and covers all of that, and can then output directly any of that and that's sort of what it is and that's why i'm talking about digital transformation and within this context how do we actually do that so you know there's a lot of etl products and they're pretty good but they don't deal with this first part which is probably the toughest nut and that is a philosophy that we have and that is we want the data to be captured at creation time to the greatest level of accuracy and completeness and also that it complies with what's needed down the line so that sort of changes how you look at this a little bit so it's not okay to just say, hey, just give us the documents because you're literally as an organization going to have to consume those, understand them, rework them. And essentially you're paying the price of that. And so that's why we want to make this digital. With ACDC, we make this a full digital process. So from the actual CAD there, there's an approach where we go to the GIS as the source because that's actually the data definition. What, what are you storing? So a lot of people will say, oh, we don't have a data standard. And I'll say, well, do you have a GIS? Yes. Okay, well, that's your data standard because that tells you what the features are, what the values are, what are valid values, what the relationships are. It's by definition already there. Interesting. So you all have a data standard, by the way. <laughs> okay. You may be using a whole lot of other standards along the way, sure. But what we want to do is work backwards from the GIS, knowing what we want and getting the design folks to include that information in a similar form or in a form that can be mapped through to what you want. So there's a, a philosophical right there. And so ACDC has a whole bunch of tools because we have been doing this CAD to GIS thing for like 20 years as a company. And so we built that in. And so what you then get is a drawing that is now structured the same every time. And there's tools of how they can get it to match that structure, but we provide that. And what we want to do then is give them a tool to validate. So one of the first transformations is just getting attributed data within the drawings right there. That's a transformation that requires a whole lot of work. And there's people who do that as their jobs. And the next one is validation. Now, validation can be done with ETL tools. We actually do the combination of ETL and the CAD because we're dealing with some of the spatial stuff that goes with it. And so you can submit drawings in ACDC, either on the desktop or in the portal. And pretty much you'll see here, this person submitted 35 that have failed down here and 15 that have passed. And that's what we find, about a three to one ratio, about the third or fourth time it's done and it's good and it's now good to go. That's typical. And you'll see it takes like a matter of minutes. It's actually pretty quick to do that. And so exactly that's why you want them to do that before they submit it. Because it's in the cloud, we can do all sorts of workflows. You can have it and use it. And you'll see Zane will talk about that in, in a little bit later. We can set up a workflow so that when a, a drawing has been submitted and validated, at that point, the person submitting that drawing can say, yes, it's ready for review. 
files off a whole set of emails to the various groups and et cetera, and the data is available for the next bit of review. Does that mean that review does not need to happen? No, you still need plan check. <laughs> You still need some human expertise to go look at that thing for various other things. But now they're not doing the 40 to 100 other things, just checking data types and range values. And is the data actually there? Do we have diameter on everything? Are the polygons closed, et cetera? They can actually go and focus on things like, oh, there's an easement that runs here. There's a capacity requirement we have to deal with here. There's a whole lot of other things that really do require what I call the smart work as opposed to moving sand. So you can literally go then from that CAD drawing to an attributed GIS. There's a bunch of metadata you may want to throw in there. Things like what's the project number, we need that, and the install date or the, the construction date. You want to just batch that across a whole lot of assets and you can script all of that and you can put it in and automatically go and reassign it. So you really have good data. And at that point, you can also then take for that single project, you can pop that straight into a digital twin. So this is the national map and you take that little construction there and you're literally within seven minutes gone from one to the other. So that's the broad context. And like I've said, I'm not going to give you all the ins and outs of everything there. Well, I'd be happy to do that obviously at a later stage. So next poll then, in that context, what formats do you accept as constructed data in? So this is a poll. So if you're on your app, we'll just do that quickly. Paper, PDF, CAD or AutoCAD, BricsCAD, whatever, CAD, shape, geo package, etc. So this is fairly critical. Where does the data come from? Because that's going to drive what kinds of tools you use to deal with it. So if you're just using ETL, then geo package and shape, if mid, those are great. You can use them. If you're trying to use ETL for the other ones, you're going to have more of a challenge. If you're still on PDF, I suggest you change that. <laughs> because I can guarantee you those PDFs were created in some CAD format and printed. So you need to fix that and you can pretty easily. Okay, so there's the results. Thanks, we'll go on to the next question while you're there, one more poll. So how do you validate submitted data? How do you actually validate it right now? Okay, so there's the results for this particular group. There's no guarantee that it's a representative sample, but in essence, there's not a lot of validation going on. I actually think that number 40, 6% of automatic checking on premise, automated checking, that's pretty good. And field checking and surveying. So those are the field checking is, is pretty expensive from an organization perspective. The no validation, that's really worrying. And then in the cloud, that's interesting. So let's move on. Let's talk, then move on to transforming actual middle workflows. So once again, I've got some slides here. I'm going to just use them to set the context. There may be details in there that you're not interested in, but our view is that the documents and documentation, particularly the GIS itself, actually determine in large part the standards that the organization de facto is using. And then that then sort of drives what the asset owner does. Now the asset owner has a choice. They can accept anything or they can insist very specifically on this is what we accept and we don't sign off otherwise. That workflow right there is a huge organizational challenge. And I've been rolling out this ACDC product in America. And I can tell you, you guys are way ahead in terms of the level of acceptance of standards and the uh, digital validation of data. It is literally the Wild West and everybody does their own thing there. And it's kind of interesting, but that's a different discussion. But the asset owner drives that. So it really depends on the organization. Are they prepared to say when you provide data, it is either on this format or that format, and we're going to check it like this. That's sort of a step one. The other one is the actual creation of the data. We talked about that just a little. So we'll look at the, at the workflows within that, because this is the source of data, whether that's from survey or CAD drawing, from you know actual designs etc. Those are, are kind of important. And there's a lot of details in here. If you look at that bottom one, there's a bunch of stuff in there and the GIS drives it, but then that could be a standard. Then by the way, there's a GIS standard and probably also a CAD standard, two separate standards. You'll need more than just a GIS standard. And so what we do with ACDC is we actually look at all of those and we define then what's the validation of the configuration. We build out validation sets and at the same time, the CAD toolkit so that you can provide the tools to the people so that when you tell them, draw it like this, you can also say, and here's the templates and here's the workflows and here's the blocks and these are all attributed and ready to go. Use these ones because then they have less excuse for saying, no, we already do it like we do it. You can also set up the workflows, the notifications, also the project documents. You know, these are the requirements, these are the standards, these are the forms you got to fill in, all the liabilities and everything else, all that stuff. It's part of the project. It's just a document. 
In ACDC, we can do it as a portal as well. So you can set up that whole portal and have all those rules for the data popped up into the portal. And at that point, you invite people to come and submit to that. So now you've got both sides of this. You've got the people creating, the people setting up, the asset owner versus the drafter. Now, once again, whole big workflow at the top because what we did was start at the bottom. How do you set it up, okay? The top right on these slides, you'll see this is the setup stage. And so this is essentially defining and has components that are used in any digital transformation. And that is, what's the need? What are the sources? What is the checking? How do you deliver? How do you accept? These are all gonna be part of any digital transformation workflow, okay? So it's, as I said, just the context for this particular one. The data standards also needs a little word to talk about. There's a lot of different data standards, fairly common ones in Australia, ADAC, ASPEC, ACDC, for example, supports all of the disciplines, has done over 10,000 submissions validated in the cloud. We have no idea how many have been done on the desktops, which was the first 12 years. Well, 12 years ago, we started on the desktop. Last five years, been, ACDC has been in the cloud, so that's only five years of stuff, thousands of projects. We provide that whole complete off-the-shelf toolkit because ASPEC is a good, very detailed data definition for GIS data. We provide essentially also the CAD toolkit. So we have all of that in there. There's all sorts of other ones in there. In the US, we've had to deal with the national CAD standard, but there's also custom data sets. And so you need to be able to customize. And it goes back to one of the questions earlier there that we're going to look at. In ACDC, we are pretty much the only solution that supports everything in ASPEC. It enables collaboration in that. So things like the toolkit, all of these things built into the menu so that when somebody clicks on the menu, it automatically knows what layer, what block, what attributes, and builds that out, a huge set of tools that you can build out and go for on that there. So dealing with open spaces, drainage roads, sewer, water, all of that stuff, and building that out. So you'll see. We're also supporting AutoCAD and BricsCAD. Attributor is another thing that we've built into the solution because if you go to a draft person and you say, hey, use these layers, they know what layers are. Use these blocks, they know what blocks are. And then you hit the wall because now you're saying to them, oh, and add these attributes. And they're going to say, wait a minute, we have no idea what you're going to call this thing. And I've got to learn all of that in addition to the other things. So what we've done is we've encapsulated the data definitions into a little tool that allows drop-down pick lists and allows them to work offline like this. So when they put in a block, it now comes in and it drops. And this has been going for a while. It's on BricsCAD and AutoCAD. It's a free plugin, but it comes with a configuration file. It can be text-based. You can customize it yourself, but it literally goes in, allows for multiple editing. But this here shows what's mandatory. So this is driven by your standards. So here's a, a spec. This is a D spec, so stormwater or drainage. And those are all mandatory. And these would be the values. And so now the drafts person has all this guidance, it's right at their fingertips, a little easier to go and ask them to change how they work because they can achieve that. And so it's just a plugin and you can go in and look at it. Uh, and so we build that into the toolkit so that when you tell people, draw it like this, use these values, you're actually giving them the guidance. And that is a huge game changer for actually getting good data. And that's what this is all about, digital transformation. So quick poll. We're getting there. We only got about seven polls, so we're just about done on those. What GI standards do you and your customers use? Here's a few of them up here, just to get a read on that. That's very interesting. Custom, that comes up a lot. That is any solution you really, to be successful in digital transformation in this instance, you need to have the organizations have the ability to tweak the data standard. And custom is a huge deal. Even if they start with a the standard, then there's, everybody has their own thing. And, and in the U.S., it's it's even crazy. They, they just don't even want to use somebody else's template for some reason. And so we've, we've had to allow that. And so what we've done with ACDC is you're building a configurator. You can literally go in, configure, set the rules, set the layers, set the features, put the drop downs and, and build that all out so that you can easily create those toolkits. Because otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time. It's not that it's difficult. It's just a lot of it. And there's quite a few moving parts. So there's that. Okay, this is that's very interesting. And so what that tells you is that the data standards are useful because they give you a good start point, but they may not fit everything of your, of your needs. Last poll for this one, which kind of will go with the custom there, to what extent are the standards customized? So we can just do this one pretty quick. Don't use a standard. Well, that makes sense. So use it as it is. Okay, so those, those 10% is are pretty much making fairly minor changes, which is good. If you don't have a standard, it's better to use something 
than, than nothing because you're just reinventing the wheel. So there's the stats, very interesting. All right. People that don't use the standard, does that mean you're really not doing digital transformation? <laughs> Let's just look at the workflow. So now I've moved on from the CAD thing to creation and validation. Let's talk about the sort of stuff you can do with ETLs, the sort of things that say ACDC also does for you. In that validation there, it's this phase over here. What we've done, by the way, is once you've set up the whole thing, you invite people to submit to a given project. That project has its standards, its documents, and everything that it requires is there. So what we've done with ACDC is make it, they go to the portal, it's essentially self-serve. You invite them, they come, they log in, they can download the template, they can download the attributed config, they can get the blocks, they can get the documents, they can read it, they can look at the tutorial, they can go try it on a, on a sample and, and do it. So the person who's actually creating it. So now if you flip from where I started, which was us in the room, mostly are creating the tools that are used for making these transformations. Flip that, you're the CAD person. What you're gonna do is log in. You're gonna download the toolkit. You may use the attributor, that thing with the little drop downs, and those configs will be part of the toolkit. And then you draw and you create, and there's a whole process there with design and complete, and then it gets to construction. But at the end of the day, you're gonna get a record drawing, which has gone through the construction and should be the as constructed document. And that then is what you really want. Now, what we found with ACDC, which is really kind of interesting, is people often will do at least two checks. They'll do kind of in the design phase because it's now push button. They can go run that check fairly early and they can even see the data in the GIS. Whereas now when you come to the final as built, you want all of that data and you can also then run that fairly quickly and go and submit it. And at this stage, you really are worried about whether the validation passes or fails. What do we mean by, by validation? We mean attributes, we mean range of values, capitalization, submits to, complies with all the domain values, topologicals, if it's a network, like a, a pressure or a gravity network, start nodes, end nodes, snapping, overshoots, undershoots, closed polygons, and then even relationships between features, like you can't have a road center line that doesn't have a road polygon around it, the name of those two match and stuff like that. So there's a lot of relationships. Once again, I'm not gonna go into everything in the product, but understand there's pretty sophisticated validation that's both attribute, geometric, and topological that can be done and scripted and put in as, as part of your standard. If it fails, what we do is we actually give them a drawing back. Here's a drawing and we mark where they are and we tell them what's wrong so that they can go back to their source drawing, fix it and resubmit. At this point, nobody in the organization needs to have even looked at that drawing because it's not validated. So you want them to do it, okay? And they're paying the cost of time and effort, but that's what you need because as an organization, you said we need this and that's part of our digital transformation. We need good data and we need a check before we take it. So you can do that. If it passes, then they can flag it as ready for review and that can actually kick off a whole set of notifications in the organization planning and engineering and let them know and they can say okay that's great and off we go and at that point if they're just using the portal in our setup they can get a, a CAD drawing with object data so it's structured and has all the data and objects because everyone can read a CAD drawing by the way but if they read it in most of the products what they get is what I call dots and lines okay you don't get the attributes we actually put those on object data and pretty much anything can read CAD drawings with object data they're defined the reason people don't use object data for entering information is there's no control on what they enter and it's all text only character fields. And so we kind of validate that and move it into and check it against numerics and range values and, and the likes. Anyway, I digress. So this then, that data is ready to go. In ACDC, we also do conversion to shape files. So instead of submitting a drawing, you could submit a set of shape files and then we'll check those as well, uh, or MIF mid for that matter. So if they are like surveyors and they've got their standard data sets, we actually provide a full set of a spec for example or other essentially the template shape files so that before they give it to you have matched it to all those columns let them do the mapping they can use their own etl to get it there you're not going to accept it unless it's in the columns you want and that kind of helps so there's different ways of doing that the other thing is you can do this all in the desktop first number of 10 years or so we were on the desktop only so the desktop person so this is in-house because that's the other thing you have some organizations where they've got engineers doing work and capital improvement projects in-house and then they've got other projects that are you know engineering companies or whatever so you can do it both and then in-house actually there's a greater functionality because you don't just have safe shape files or object data you can actually write straight to your gis whatever that gis is it's sde or postgres or sql whatever 
or Oracle, anything, we can push it straight into those. And so the ACDC desktop validation is literally where the in-house CAD person draws their CAD drawing, hits the button, validate it, check it, off it goes. Or if you've got it from the portal, you can load that drawing and then say, okay, convert this into the GIS. And it's all mapped into those features, put it directly. Now, obviously you don't put it straight into your live database. You probably put it in a staging database and then you tie it in with all the others, but that's, that's kind of how they work. So what I've touched on is three digital workflows in that area, the drawing creation, the validation, and then the conversion down at the bottom here. And so I look at just that whole big workflow. There are a bunch of different transformations. There's the actual attributing and standardizing of attributes. However you do that, that's essentially turning it into a form that is consumable in a digital sense directly. And that's, that's one part. There's the validation part that that's all digital. Now we change. It's not somebody just looking at a PDF or a printer for that matter and saying, hey, a line weight isn't good enough. I can't what diameter that pipe is. Okay. Notification and communication between parties has actually come up as a very strong thing that is part of this digital transformation. If people don't know how it works or where it is in the process or who does what, that becomes a challenge on an enterprise level. And then conversion and capture into the system, that's bread and butter transformation right there is a fully digital. So what happens is you take all of those moving parts and you put it into this comprehensive combination of workflows. And that's been what we've been focused on, on our system. And it gives you essentially a full digital interaction between developers and asset owners, which is another aspect, by the way, because you've got asset owners who have multiple engineering companies putting projects to them. And then you'll be an engineering company and you'll be providing projects to multiple different asset owners. And so what we've done there is we actually set that up. So if you're the asset owner, you go into the ACDC portal as constructed.com portal for your organization and you set up a project and you invite various engineering or developers or whatever for that project and then you know who submits it and they on their end can go to their dashboard and that engineer will see oh i've got projects with with this council this authority etc and so it goes both ways and i'll just show you here's a couple of sort of back-end reporting that we can do this is very interesting this was this morning or yesterday sort of the big picture of all the interactions going on. So on the left, you'll see some asset owners and on the right, you'll see developers. And you'll see that some asset owners get most of their stuff done by a limited subset of developers. And you'll see some developers provide to any number of folks. And so there's this interaction between the two. So you can go in and search that and look at it. And that was part of the way we set up the solution was we could deal with both sides of that. And, and it's pretty interesting stuff. And actually shows, you know, this digital transformation stuff, we've, we've been pushing that for quite a while. Let's get a little more specific inside of a drawing itself. So here's a drawing drawn to the A-spec standard, and, and we can look at that. You'll see then that what that gives you is all of the attributes that go with it. We've put our particular CAD on there, and then there's all the rules that go with that, and these are drop-down values that go with that. You can then take that drawing, pop it into the cloud, and here's somebody's dashboard in asconstructed.com. So their ACDC dashboard, you'll see they've got documents available. They've got multiple. So this is an engineering company. They've got multiple cities they submit to. They've got different projects with different due dates. There's documents, there's training and help and all that sort of stuff. Here's that dashboard of one person of what they've submitted, matter of minutes, they check the thing. And a drawing could be any number of disciplines within that drawing, it's okay will automatically weed them out, check which ones have been there because they're specified on certain layers with certain blocks and attributes. And then there all the rules go with that. And so if it fails, yes, actually, this is the US, the city of Broomfield, Colorado, one of my customers. And they, you'll see you get reporting on what's failed, introduced warnings because sometimes stuff is mandatory, but you also want warnings to say, hey, you know what, we really wanted that, but it wasn't provided, but I'm still going to accept it. I just don't need to know what's lacking. There's sort of a little bit of gray area that, that can get built in there in this particular setup and standard. So this is for Broomfield, their validations, a whole bunch there. You can see the workflow of when the thing was loaded up and how long it took, and you can get all of that sort of information. When a drawing is actually passed, actually, let me play this guy here. So yeah, this is back in, in Australia. So if I go in and, and it's actually passed, you can output the shape file. So they're right there in the portal only, or a drawing file. You can take that and we'll just show you that this is real data. And so this has got R spec, D spec, O spec, and a bunch of stuff in there. And once that's been loaded, you can obviously take that if you're a 
any kind of GIS person. You, you can go in and download if there were errors, you'll actually have a marker. It'll tell you polylines on this layer should be closed. So that road polygon there needs to be closed. It'll look at the lines, put all those attributes in there. You can get, if you want, a text listing. We've got the exact coordinates, but more importantly, we're actually putting a circle with the data on the map so the CAD person can literally, and it's on a specific layer for geometric errors versus attribute errors, and they got their colored coded. So they can rip through those, check them out. As they go through them, they just delete that circle. When they know the layer's empty, they're good to go, they resubmit. So it becomes very efficient. They kind of like it a lot. And so here, well, let's walk through that. So if you go in here, you'll see that particular circle, the yellow versus the red versus the cyan. So this will say you need a material value and it needs to be connected. This one down here says this block is isolated, meaning that it needs, it relates to some feature and it needs to have a pipe touching it or whatever. You'll see this one here says the well, polyline should be closed again. So it's flagged it. I can click on the polyline. I can go and check it and run through it and then resubmit. So pretty neat thing. And then when I'm ready and I've got it validated, so that does check marks, that's good news. You can then right mouse button on the actions here and go in and say certified. Once it's certified, you can actually pull down those data sets, as I said, and go look at them. So let's move along. So here's that set of shape files that were there. And we use shape files as sort of the quick on the cloud, but actually we, if you're on the desktop, you can push straight into your GIS database from that drawing with object data. So here you'll see if you click on the different things. So here's our spec, there's that polygon that wasn't closed. You can see all the attributes. And in those attributes, there's a bunch that are pulled from the metadata, the project number, that sort of thing are added in there as well. We've done things like checking for containment and all of that as well. So there's a lot in there. So I just mentioned that because this is at the heart of this digital workflow, this transformation. Now we can actually take a drawing, upload it to the cloud, and six or seven minutes later, it's in your GIS. Done. Okay, it's like magic. I can tell you this. The problem is not a technology problem anymore. The biggest problem we have is organizations and people. <laughs> just to get them to actually sign up and do it, just to figure it out. And that's interesting because it'll cut to our next point. So what we're doing here is, on the CAD side, you need structured, self-validated, and streamlined. That, those are, are where we go. On the on the ACDC side, if it's the portal, it's managed, it's consistent. You can see what was submitted when, 24/7 availability. And on the GIS side, we know now we know exactly the list of things that were checked. You can create your own rules. You can build that out. If you've got three rules, or if you've got 200 rules, it's fine. You know those have been checked. Okay, and and you can go from there. And we built out pretty advanced rules for the topological checks. You've got a sewer network. We'll check the invert level of this pipe versus that pipe. We'll look at the pit information. We'll look at the directionality of the lines. We'll take like a, a service connection. We'll know that for water, it has to go from the pipe to the parcel for sewer, for the waste wastewater is gonna go the other way. We're checking all of that. So this is a topologically traceable network right from the get-go, okay? So let's look what Zane had to say about the before and after. This is, and I'm gonna, I've, I've sort of reduced this, but. What we did with ACDC is we looked at the before workflow and we try to keep the after workflow the same, but digital. Okay. And so you'll see, you still draw stuff. You still validate things, which they were doing before. This plan check is still there. You got submittals and sign off is still there, but you're literally now pushing the button instead of getting a bunch of PDF files or CAD drawings that you have no idea what to do with, or you're going to take months and time and effort and go resurvey, et cetera. So here's what Zane had to say about before ACDC, and then he will have the same one for after. How was your workflow before deploying ACDC, and how does that compare to your workflow now? Yes, so our, our workflow before implementing AC, the ACDC solution was quite significantly different than post-implementation of ACDC. Prior to implementing ACDC, we received as constructed data in many different forms. So we would receive data in a PDF emailed to us in AutoCAD drawings or sometimes just scribbled on pieces of paper. So various forms we're receiving as constructed data, we would then, there would be a positions such as myself in the GIS and assets team that would take those various inputs and essentially geo-reference them into a GIS package, desktop package, 
and digitise. So undertake the manual digitisation from those various inputs. Digitise those in on a onto GIS map using aerial photography and parcel boundaries or potentially the digital inputs such as the PDF plans. And then go through the painstaking task of manually attributing all of those assets that were manually digitised. And then obviously process them, import them into the asset management system. So quite a tedious process, a process of duplication in work and very inefficient, to be honest. Some of you in a familiar, a familiar spot or you've seen that before. Let's see what he had to say um, about afterwards. Uh, so post implementation of the ACDC solution, we now, we set up a project in the ACDC portal to receive an as constructed submission. We monitor the portal for submissions and we get an automated notification when we've received a validated submission. We then download that beautiful DWG file that is fully drawn, survey accurate, fully attributed is, is the big, big key there too. We have a look at it, make sure it looks acceptable and agrees with any other as constructed plans we may have received. We then either accept that drawing or reject it and ask for revisions. And once accepted, we then process that all that asset data into the ACDC staging database using ACDC desktop in AutoCAD. And then we import that into our asset management system. So a significant change in process post implementation of ACDC going from manual digitizing into an automated digital workflow. So I've got three things to go here. We've got the benefits. We've got a little bit about the 2D, 3D. And I've done a survey recently looking at costs and return on investment and what's the turnaround time for going through this whole thing because we've got some real customers they've been using it for a number of years. Okay, we'll get started here. So. We're going to look at benefits. I did, as I said, we did a little bit of analysis. What's the cost? What, why? You know, what, what did that digital transformation? Obviously, it's in the context of ACDC because I have real customers, real data, and a real solution there. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Let's see what Zane had to say about that. What were the most significant benefits your organization experienced after implementing the ACDC solution? So the most significant benefits for our organization after implementing ACDC, there is the obvious benefit of the efficiency gains. We're talking about one full-time staff member transformed to instead only requiring someone one to two hours a week to work on as constructed submissions. So that's the most obvious efficiency gain and benefit, but something that we didn't realize would be so beneficial is the single point of submissions via the ACDC portal. We we thought, oh, we'll be receiving as constructed drawings via email in a DWG and, oh, that's really good and, and we'll be able to process that through ACDC. But with the ACDC portal, it's a self-serve for our developer community. And we have external developers for all our gifted assets. We have our internal we call them developers, but they're really their design engineers and project managers delivering, all delivering through the single portal, the ACDC portal. And we save a huge amount of time and headache as well by having developers run their own drawing validations and submit those projects online rather than emailing files or project managers putting bits of paper on desks and things like that. So through the portal, we can easily keep track of projects and monitor developers' submissions and their progress. And we can provide resources to assist them through the ACDC portal as well. There's a great sort of downloads area where we provide help guides and templates and the ACDC portal is, was really quite surprising in terms of the benefit to the organization. Yes, yeah, so that's one of the benefits there. So one of the breakouts I thought we could do is what business functions would benefit from using a digital twin technology in your organization. And so I'm just transitioning and we'll talk a little, come back to the benefits. I'll run through those ROIs and all of that. But I just want to throw digital twins in the mix there as well. 
And when we mean, you know, what I mean by digital twin is literally viewing the data as a manifestation of reality, uh, but in a digital form and through some sort of interface where you can look at it. Okay. So just want to see, get a read from you guys is what's the benefits of doing that? Okay. Thank you. So I tried to write those down. I think it's more or less close-ish to what we got. Good. Now let's keep going. Yeah. So the digital twin thing is obviously a new development. Well, not that new. We've been trying to push it to our customers for years, but a lot of folks just haven't had the data. And so that's a challenge in and of itself, but that's a different workflow. Yeah, I think that uh, you know, that investment from the Australian government's federal and state has produced a product that's going to change, I think, the way things work moving forward. It's going to take a while, but it's definitely allowing for catalogs, for data availability, for even governance on who can see what, and for organizations like some of our customers in Australia here, what they can push up and make available or not, and how that can get shared. So it does enable a bunch of modeling and stuff as well. I'm going to come back to Digital Twin just fairly shortly. But if we look at, and I said I would do this as constructed plans. Now, this is actually a presentation from a previous Locate SSI conference 2015. And at this stage, South Australia Water were doing a pilot. And it was a measured pilot to look at what was the return on investment. And it's just very detailed, very interesting info. We've got other ones. But these guys did a pretty good job of this. It's interesting. This is their diagram of taking the ACDC product and getting a configuration set. So basically still the same stuff. Drawing templates, same thing. And then validation at that point, which was desktop. And setting those rules and applying that. And being able to have people submitting and checking. And so that's what the pilot was doing. And then they could, you know, if it failed, you resubmit. And once it was done, you could then push that data straight into, and, and they still do today, they push the data straight into SDE. They have made some changes on the data standards they're using, et cetera. But in this, in this pilot, they actually took set drawings and pushed that backwards and forwards. So they looked at, like, what's the exact time of doing it manually compared to automatic? And that's kind of why I'm showing you this. It was a five-fold improvement on the water data set they were looking at, and they tracked, you know, what the, each time of each bits of the process was. And so it basically took nine, and this is just somebody sitting down and capturing this stuff, okay? It's not the bigger process, which sometimes you ask, how long does it take? Well, there's organizational things, you know, sign-offs and handoffs, et cetera, that often mean that a new plan really does take maybe a month or two because it's got to go through all this other internal processes, but the actual physical data capture is what they measured here. And so that was a five-fold improvement. And then they had to go and make some adjustments to abandoning. We could actually streamline those and knock off 17 seconds right there. <laughs> the, uh, and then on the wastewater side, it, it was the same thing, give them a plan and check, and we're looking at a tenfold improvement. And so they extrapolated that out and said, okay, well, they looked at that further down the line. They also went and looked and compared if you're taking that PDF and, and digitizing it or looking at the coordinate values in a matrix of a table of contents kind of thing and capturing it, what's the difference in the actual spatial accuracy? And there was a big benefit and they actually showed the two different maps. So pretty detailed stuff. So, you know, it, it just showed that this was just way better to do. Although I think the people who were doing this particular PDF was pretty clear and they did a pretty good job actually of capturing it. But the benefits were just there, the spatial accuracy, things like the intersections and all of that was, was noticeable and important. And connectivity was also a fairly big benefit for the overall thing because for the automated process, it had picked out all those faults and the whole thing was done, whereas the manual one was not. So things like hydrants to snap to mains but not break the mains and those sort of rules that we would apply across the thing. Things like no undershoots, overshoots, maintenance shelf snapping to ends, et cetera. So you, get, you got all of that. And this is you know pretty much no issues with the automated system. So mandatory attributes pushed straight into the GIS and looking at that. And so, so that was for them pretty big deal. They then also took that timing to, you know, what's the cost of those people and, and push that out. We did recently, fairly recently, a little survey. Here's five of our customers and what we did is look at well how long does it take so there's a before and after if you look at the little arrowheads a before and after and i kind of put these in quadrants 
So the bottom left quadrant there is pretty much it takes forever and you get really bad data. Okay. And the top right quadrant is where you want to be. It goes really quick and you get super good data. So the usual sort of which quadrant are you in? So you've got either it's slow and fast and from the quality and completeness, it's poor or good. And you don't want to be in this one, long time, low quality. Uh, yeah, it takes a long time and you can do it. If you put people on it and they spend a good amount of time and do a manual capture, you can get good quality data, but the cost is going to be high. And so it's not that effective in terms of the time and the person cost. You could go to the other extreme, of course. They could just eyeball it and do it really quick and say we're done, but you're going to get pretty bad data. So fast may give you low quality. And then obviously this is where you want to be up here. And so I take that and I go, all right, what about... You know, we called our product ACDC, nothing to do with any kind of music, but we did look at these songs and you could put those in quadrants just to check. If you were in the long time, low quality, and then you're on the highway to hell kind of deal and a number of other songs in that area. And so, yeah, this is just lighthearted by the way. You could be over here where it takes forever to get anything done and people get super frustrated. So there's a couple of songs you might want in there. And down on this side, they're pretty much lying bottom corner that the data is captured because they just zip right through and they missed most of it and, and off you go. So really somebody's going to get to that. Are they going to not mention it, slip up a lip, or are they going to say it's all done and really they actually know that they just zipped along and didn't take any trouble. What you really want to do is be back in back in the black would be the the next part and then so apply that. Anyway, a little lighthearted pun on the play on the, the as constructed the design certification. So these are actually the implications on those boxes. You go from a backlog of data to the top where you get a fully automated, high quality, high level of confidence. So if I go back to those five folks, these ones, what we do is we average those out. The green would be the mean of all of the measures from before. And then the blue would be after. And that's the before after right there. And that's what we were hoping this would happen, but it actually did. I actually think they did they overestimated how bad they were, but never mind. Well, underestimated, should I say. But the fact is, that's what you want. You want to turn this thing down from a matter of days to months, down to minutes. And you want quality where you know these are the items that have been checked. We know they absolutely fit that. And, and you can get high quality. The interesting part is between those five, there were various sizes of organizations. You heard Zane say they do about 100 plans, more and more than 100 plans a year. And they, they've turned that around to, you know, somebody, the full-time equivalent is now really only looking, you know, 20 minutes a day at the stuff. So that gives you an idea of the metric. But if we take that for those organizations, and we actually, I averaged out all of them. So some of these guys were doing between 10 and 20 a year. And if I take that out, you actually get a number, an average, and this is, you know, so this is averaged out, but we're averaging 264 person days for that particular subset. And I'll refine it as we do a sample that's a bit more and we can segment it out for small, medium, and large organizations. But this is significant. That's a lot of money, okay? Because that's, you know, full-time equivalent plus for the year. And the quality is not as good. So definitely something we can move along. In terms of digital transformation, the particular case study I've taken, that there is essentially proof that this is pretty much a good thing. So said I'd come back to digital twins, let's go. So with our ACDC product, obviously we've got the data there, we can pop it right in. Let me just show you a little bit of this. So this is the national map. You should know about it. I sing the praises of this in America when I show it to people because I think you guys are, are doing that. So here's a CAD drawing of this intersection that was run through ACDC. We uploaded it straight into digital map. So that's the stuff in the plan because we've got all the attributes. We can load it. We can go from the CAD drawing to this with all the attributes, kind of matter of minutes. Makes a pretty interesting scenario right there. So just thought I'd show you that one. We'll go and move along. So if you look at a, say a, a sewer, a water and sewer or roads and drainage, Example, so there's some data here and we can add in those, put that in for that intersection. You can look at it in the digital twin straight up. So out of ACDC, that AutoCAD drawing is 3D drawing, got attributes. We can, we can blurt those out. So it's a 3D drawing, but they're just points. So the point does know what the diameter and the depth is. Yes? Um, the drainage pit is actually a polygon. Okay, okay. so you've drawn that. And the, yeah, these squares are actually polygons. So they could be rectangles for that matter. And so if you just walk through that, here we're doing the, this is actually a spec, so it's water, sewer, roads, drainage, pop straight into digital twin. 
if you rotate it on the national map, or actually this is Digital Twin Victoria, see it up there, you can load your own data into it, you can pop that there, but this is straight out of a CAD drawing, and you can go in and, and take a look at it, and zoom it around, and in this case, we just took screenshots, and go and look at it from every which way, and, and then you can, you know, turn things on and off, and go and use the slider bar to show the, the ground or not. Here's the attributes, so you click on that pipe there, You've got all of this stuff, the length, the width, the material, all of that. It's in there. It came straight out of the CAD drawing. Okay, so just thought I'd show that. The other one in, in this whole digital transformation is a lot of folks, including our customers, that have two and a half or two and three quarter D data. Okay. In other words, you've got a, a line or a dot and you know what its depth and diameter is. You don't actually have it as a full-blown 3D object. You have it as a two and a half D. Maybe you also have install date, repair date, et cetera. So then that we are adding that extra quarter of a D, but I don't really know what to call those. But it's more than just 2D because you have more than that. And so you can take that, you can look at it, you can pop those things out in, in say, our products, for example, and in ACDC, straight out to CZML. And that's where this comes from and popped out. So you can also, you know, see that. So here's an example of, this is one of our products, but, but this is the two and a half, whatever D data. Let's say there's a trace on this pipe here and those in the brown and now shaded in that orange color, those were the impacted parcels that were drained to that given pipe. And now we're saying from ACDC, we've got a topological network. We know what the connectivity is. You can view that guy. And if you then go and take that data, and you pop that straight into the digital twin. It's the same thing. You'll see the pipe. It's about down here. And I'll play that as well. So same thing. We've done the trace. We pull in that data. And now you can see. So there's the sewer network. The water wastewater. We've turned buildings on just to give you context. The selected pipe is the yellow one. That was the trace was run on. And you can pop that then straight back into and get the results. Because it's just a selection set of that trace and actually view that. So once again, the pipes all have their own attributes uh, and you can go in and, and do that. So obviously this here, first ones I showed you was the CAD drawing straight into this. This one is more about the whole digital twin thing and some functionality now where you can go into an existing enterprise-wide system and do a trace and get essentially a 3D visualization straight out of that data. Here's the parcels and buildings impacted that would be draining to that particular point. So. Last polls, we've got two things. I'm interested in this three thing for well, poll number six. So if you want to pop up your app there, we've got two, two questions. Simple one, what percentage of data, and you can guess in your organization or in the ones you work with is 3D? Because I'm interested in that, but also I think it, it'll play into how we go into this digital transformation. Some folks, digital transformation is really about digital twin and that's all they think about. I think there's a lot more to it than that, but this is just a quick question. So a fair amount is in the higher area does anyone think that people have like more than half their data is 3d some engineering companies yeah like yeah it depends on who you have in the room okay good let's go the last poll then is of the different data types so data disciplines if you like which what data should be 3d so you could select multiple here so that's fine and it changes the way you interpret that data Alrighty, so 3D definitely is something we want and it applies to more information, particularly as constructed and utility stuff and obviously design right there. Cadastral, not entirely as much. So common issues and best practices, the last section we're going to talk about. There's a couple of things in there. I'll pop this one up for you to think about. Okay, fortunately we didn't have that with this particular workshop. <laughs> it kind of worked out okay. Yeah, so here's what Zane had to say about that. It's his last video. What advice would you give to other organizations considering the ACDC solution for their own digital transformation journey? So when it comes to advice for another organization considering the ACDC solution and, and also our learnings, firstly, I would consider about planning of the project and to ensure that it's going to be adequately resourced to implement the project properly. It's a considerable digital transformation project. It's, it's a change of process. It's not just a software installation. So don't underestimate the investment required to effectively implement the ACAC solution and, the, and have it fully integrated. Also consider the cost of this initial implementation in terms of resourcing hours and the ongoing licensing fees. 
Also, another piece of advice that I'd give is to start small and start simple. Master the process, the, the change of process for per, perhaps a couple of different asset classes rather than trying to receive every piece of as constructed information across every asset class via ACDC to begin with. I would start with your your major asset classes. So the City of Greater Bendigo started with our R spec, our road assets and our stormwater drainage assets because we saw them as something around 80% of our asset value for the organisation. They were our most important assets to receive, to ensure that they were there ready for you know, road inspections according to the road management plan. Uh, so we started small, we focused on those asset classes to begin with, and we have plans to roll it out to other asset classes, of course, the open space asset class and buildings, but start small, nail the process, and then you can always build on that. Also, other advice for organisations would be to communicate early and communicate effectively, of course. So get an internal understanding and commitment. So within your internal organisation, ensure that you've got managers on board, maybe even directors perhaps, to so that they understand what this solution is going to provide and get commitment from within the organization before starting the implementation. Then, then ensure that you communicate effectively with your developer community. So give them a heads up. We gave them, in our instance, we gave them something like three or four months, letting them know that uh, we would be changing process over to delivery of as constructed via the ACDC portal. And finally, final piece of advice is to ensure you have some sort of stick or something that you can whack developers with to hold them accountable for delivering everything via the ACDC portal in a timely manner. Um, so in our situation, we had excellent relationships with our developer community and our internal project managers and that has served us very well but i still would recommend having some sort of stick so an example of that might be a bond for external developers to ensure that they provide the as constructed data or have it as part of your planning permit process before permits get approved or statement of compliance get issued and also as part of that is to get the full benefits out of the ACDC solution, you need to be able to rely on those developers delivering the information. And by the way, the question was also digital transformation, not just ACDC, the product. So it was a little broader than that question. So this was the last breakout I had to kind of help us share experiences. And that is who or what is the driver for digital transformation? And so within the context of much of our discussion, maybe talk about that and then we'll summarize it up. And then we'll go to Zane after that with questions as well. But who or what is the driver for digital transformation? So now we're not on digital twins. We're not on the 3D thing. We're just on transformation. Okay, let's go to each of the tables. Just talk a little bit about who or what is the driver for digital transformation in your organization? All right, so we're a bunch of technology geeks, aren't we? <laughs> Joking. But in essence, it looks like potential perceived efficiencies, but also people trying to get other people's data or data in a much more accessible way and using that as well. So driving that and then just pushing for it and saying, you know, this is available, we should be able to do it. And I think one of the things against it was it, you know, it may cost money and so the budget constraints are real things that we would need to contend with. Okay. Any last comments from anybody before I, I'll open up to Zane? Any questions to Zane? No questions for Zane. Did, did you have any questions for us, Zane? Any comments uh, maybe? Yeah, I did. Well, yes. Yeah. But I did take a few notes and it's great to see who is in the audience. Obviously, we're coming from a very specific perspective, it being local council and our implementation, you know, the way it is. Quite simple, I believe, our implementation. You know, it, it seems simple. I think that's a beauty of the product is that through the implementation, we've got this rather complex thing, but really the steps do seem quite simple.
Anyway, I can talk plenty about that. What I do want to mention, though, is if anybody wants to talk more, then we are more than willing to share our experience and you can get in touch with us kind of one-on-one -on -one or, you know, contact me directly, whatever you feel like, but City of Greater Bendigo, because we're happy to share, you know, all of our experience and even so far as like our, you know, the intricacies of our process, our documentation, we're just, you know, it's not intellectual property for us it's let's share the knowledge kind of thing excellent everybody so yeah if you any questions we're here as a resource for you to draw on you can talk as to as much detail as you like and um, thanks very much and thanks to open spatial yeah has a question what motivation slash stick did you use to get the internal engineers to get on board yeah that's a, a big one we used the beauty of logic and common sense appealing to project managers and similar minded people such as engineers the beauty of explaining the absurdity of duplicating the work taking their design drawings and and manually digitizing from them is just insane in the modern day and thankfully we communicated that effectively and they were smart enough to receive that information. I know I'm being a little bit facetious here, but realistically, it's like, come on, are you serious? We're going to take your, your plans and manually digitize them or even work with them. You can work with us. So a big part of it was getting management on board, communicating it early. So there was communication over probably 12 to 18 months. You know, this is coming we're aware of it it's a smart thing to do and and they can kind of air any grievances in that time and have them addressed but hopefully logic prevails which i understand it doesn't <laughs> yeah and then obviously the ongoing support and streamlining and all of that as well yeah. absolutely what what has helped our internal team be delivering via the acdc portal and delivering in the aspec format by acdc is yeah, with me and the GIS and Assets team here are very communicative. As you can see, I don't know, my personality is explains kind of the relationship that we have. We communicate effectively and well, and we have open conversations and dialogue. I think it's we've got a good team going. We've got a good organizational culture, in certainly in the engineering area. I can't speak for the entire organization, but and all of that really really helps and so i understand that's that's difficult for potentially you know larger organizations or organizations where you're not in this such a beneficial team environment perhaps okay well thank you very much where are we going to wrap up appreciate you being online and uh, thanks thanks for your inputs i think the the audience here were nodding their heads in a good way i think yeah. okay all right appreciate that thank you